morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another State of the Balance with me, your host, Imperial Dane. So what's been happening here sort of since the last month? Well, we're getting closer to the patch. We're sort of, you know, getting to the finalizing stage. I'll be having a video once we sort of get the full final notes. There's some recently final one, but there could still be some extra changes here and there. So I'm not going to make a video until we got those. But in the meanwhile, what has happened elsewhere? I mean, sort of going through the usual order with the Soviets... Not a lot has really changed. I mean, there's a bit more urban defense being played, you know, more shock troopers in general, more anti-tank anti guns, even though they're getting nerfed soon. But beyond that, I mean, penal troopers are very much, sort of, how we say, dominant within the internal Soviet meta. Just going for a lot of them can put a lot of pressure on your opponents, partly because the penal troopers are very, very flexible and can deal with a large variety of threats when you start out in the anti-tank rather than such. So this is sort of more dominant. That's not to say conscript plates have gone completely in a, a fashion, but in particular, this is the uh, Orbital Commanders, uh, the conscript tend to, you know, perform uh, more weakly and require a lot more sort of skillful handling. I mean, they all sort of kind of lose out there. And partly that, of course, just the Orbital Commanders, you know, being uh, in need of some work there in terms of proper balancing. But I also feel like these penal troops and tendencies are perhaps a bit too good and probably could need be toned down uh, somewhere. Though I'm not entirely sure where I put my finger there. Because a lot of it is then. I also feel... Sorry about that. I ran out of space. But I feel like the T-70 could also perhaps do with a light turning down somewhere. I mean, it's just kind of like a lot of metal again. It's just heavily dominant and I think it's part of the issue with a lot of some of the particular light vehicles again they just tend to be sort of very heavily there and you know they to an extent I feel like warp things perhaps a bit too much I mean I don't know how I'd do it but I'd probably look at like turning it down perhaps just making it slightly more expensive so it feels less amazing but and I feel like the T-70 is slightly overperforming just popping a bit too much beyond the horizon on jet fuel and whatnot so that could probably do with being slightly turned down a bit so it doesn't feel quite as super amazing and just tank through the end because it tends to be a very sort of swing heavy element and you might say well that's fair enough that's the Soviets but then where's the German swing heavy element they could do the same in the late game and it's not there so you know unless they're going to give the Germans that you know we might just want to turn down the T-70 just a bit Moving on to the Americans, I mean, recon support, airborne, basically Pathfinder heavy strategies, you know, quite, you know, bulging up. Armour, seeing a bit here and there, but it's not quite as common. You've got the usual heavy cavalry play, but there's been less of that as of late. There's less just relying on the Pershing, possibly with some changes here and there as well, though nothing directly affecting uh, the Pershing. But beyond that, not so much. Also, the Americans sort of large the same as usual, you know, Lieutenant, Captain. They sort of both should have recently heavily used the pack cards, are definitely seeing more usage in general but beyond that i mean the american meta isn't quite i feel like dominated by anything as such except again maybe just a tad too many pathfinders so i feel like they're sort of in an all right spot at the moment they were probably still want to feel like the rock and quick pack be toned down just a tad but that's just me moving on to the brits the brits have built the usual same mess which partly boils down to the fact that vickers machine gun isn't good enough. I'm not necessarily saying it doesn't do enough damage or suppress enough. The problem is, and this is the same issue with the Wehrmacht MT-42 team, it's too slow. It just, it can't keep pace with the infantry, meaning it can't support the infantry. And that kind of, you know, leaves the machine gun not very good. And again, it's the same issue you see with the Wehrmacht. I mean, neither faction really uses the machine guns a lot. The British in particular, though, that's because they got super good infantry, whereas the Wehrmacht's got the gun who are all right, but, you know, they're not infantry sections. And, again, I feel like, A, they need to tone down the section, they need to make the Vickers mobile, maybe, you know, tone down its like fire response, and they could also do the same with the Wehrmacht's MD-42, but something definitely needs to happen with a machine gun. The Invasco getting nerfed is, you know, all right, but, you know, I feel like definitely that needs to be toned down, and the AC armored car could also fix them to be perhaps toned down a tad, or something else needs to give. So I think that sort of covers my thoughts down the bits. I mean, in terms of how they're playing, I mean... It's a bit here and there. Some go with commandos. There's, you know, a lot of Royal Artillery because the Valentine tank is, you know, a nice calling, you know. So that's happening a lot. Some go for the Churchill stuff. So there's a bit of a variety in terms of British doctors. Of course, you've got a few also going for, for advanced and placements. And good Lord, I wish they never added that one. So there is some variety there. But, I mean, the vast majority of British strategies just get a lot of sections, both of them. Maybe get grenades and just chuck them at the enemy. Like, the infant sections are too good and they need to be toned down, like, period, full stop. And again, compensate back to making the Vickers machine gun good because, just like the Vama MG42, which at least sees some light usage, 
It just can't keep pace with the infantry a lot of the cases and it's just too vulnerable in those situations at which point most players are never going to bother with it because it's too clumsy to play with. I mean again there'll be cases where they'll go for two but usually that's it and they'll be usually the minority of the cases so that's sort of my opinion there. Moving on to the Oberkommando Vest. I mean again similar to the Brits I mean it's basically heavy basic infantry all ranging a lot of false grenadiers. Maybe some Sturm Pioneers also have better against the usage. And again, I think that to an extent boils down to the Falcons being a tad too good. And they definitely need to be toned down as well. Which again, would also have not for other chains here. And I feel like in that regard, the Falcons have been for too long a bit too meta-warping. And they really just need to you know, be like toned down a bit. But to compensate, the Sturm Pioneers need to be made better. But not just straight up better. I think some sort of upgrade needs to be given to them. So they can sort of long-term become better. I'd probably just suggest adding a fifth man or something else that just you know can scale better with the game you can sort of in that way be rewarded more for going for Sturm Pani heavy strategies without just immediately snowballing the enemy with them which is sort of the other problem with the other commander vest they sort of snowball a bit too hard if you just make them too good because you're an early game unit so in that regard you know giving them some sort of upgrade upgrades so you makes them more useful and later in the game could you know I think do a lot of good there for the Sturm Pioneers Similarly, I mean, the meta is heavily dominated by special operations as, well, usual. And I honestly feel like at this point the command panther's the problem. Like, they need to turn it down. And personally, I'd probably just suggest removing it entirely. But the question is what to replace it with. And to that, I don't have an answer. So I think the command panther in some way needs to be turned down. They could lower straight or further. They, of course, have to lower the experience requirements. So it doesn't become impossible to veterans up with it. But I feel like definitely something that needs to be, you know, toned it down. So we sort of get some more variety there. And, I mean, the battle group headquarters, I mean, partly it's just, you know, the whole thing works together nicely with mechanized ranking into the Command Panther, but there's also the argument that just battle group headquarters, the stuff there isn't quite good enough and could probably do for some stuff. The question is, what do you do there? With, again, with, again, making stuff perhaps too good and, eh. I mean, again, you could maybe lock on the Storm Pioneer upgrade within the battle group headquarters. That way, you know, opening up for some greater set of strategies. I mean, that could be an idea there to consider. Beyond that, though, I don't really feel like I've much to suggest that, but the Overcrest definitely do, still needs work, I think, to be an improvement, you know, more, well, less just full scum the spam, Interlux, Puma, Command Panther Faction, which is like how it tends to boil down to in the 99% of the cases, which is not particularly exciting in the long run. Finally, moving on to the Wehrmacht, who are suddenly getting some buffs. They'll be making it again when we talk in the patch notes. We're sort of getting my full thoughts there. Short version, some of it's nice, but there's definitely still a lot of more work to be done there. And the overall situation of the Wehrmacht is, you know, there's German infantry is happening, and some are going to use mobile defense, blitzkrieg, and there's some variety in doctrines for the Wehrmacht. I mean, that's always a good sign, but it's not just one doctrine that keeps appearing again and again. Strategically, again, it's mostly, you know, get a bunch of gunnies, some MD42s. Panzer going to just slowly begin to catch on, possibly an expectation of the buffs there to them. Otherwise, it's two to two. In fact, force unless you know get out Panzer Force as fast as possible. The interesting bit there has been an increase in Austrians happening, which is again I suspect in anticipation of the patch and sort of get a feeling of how the Austrian works, and then you know get ready to sort of use it. So that's sort of slightly happening. Tier four happens. But again, it's not necessarily something super consistent. Most players will still go for Panzer Force. There'll be a few that try to you know, rush for Tier 4, but it's definitely sort of slightly peeling off a bit. And if you were to ask some players, I believe Price was the one to say that, uh, well, he'd honestly prefer Stugs over the Panthers still. And there might certainly be an argument to that. Though, of course, the Stugs certainly has their own issues. But I mean, the problem with Tier 4 for them still is it's a lot of resources for something that can still be reasonably counted by easily by into tank guns, which kind of locks down a bit of the utility of it. It's a massive resource investment compared to what the Allies have to put into their late game stuff. And it doesn't really you know step highly above it and that's kind of where I feel like you know the uh, train derails uh, rather too consistently so that's something that probably you know might need a bit of look at still but oh I mean the Vermont still has a lot of stuff that you know kind of doesn't make sense a lot of the veterans abilities are kind of still naff like the Vermont mortars and the two generally just have a useless counter artillery ability the Stug has target weak point which doesn't matter because it's been so incredibly nerfed and they're still not replaced it with anything useful Hell, the Stug's Fetchy 2 isn't very good either and could also do with something. I mean, there's a lot there to take a look at as well. So, well, again, it's nice the Ostman is getting buffed. The problem is they're kind of sort of fixing one of the most obvious symptoms of years of neglect for the Wehrmacht, and they're not really fixing some of the more systematic, you know, neglect that's sort of been happening and, you know, the 
deeper issues that's now sort of happening within the Wehrmacht and they really need to get around to doing that because I still suspect in the long run you're still going to see a lot more that Oberkommandos and the Wehrmacht player in particular ones is one of the high ranks because again the Oberkommandos just works better party again as also mentioned with the British the machine gun is just too slow and clumsy for what it's supposed to do it can't effectively support the infantry and that really just sort of locks down what the MD-42 is supposed to do. In a lot of cases, again, basically limits how many you're ever going to see. And, you know, if anything ever, you know, which again is sort of like, if you ever buff the gun, it is what you know is what some players want them to do. They'll just drop the MD-42 because the MD-42 is not good. I know a lot of people say trying to sort of waltz around it. But, like, if you sort of look at the history of Wehrmacht for both games, in most cases, they've never been particularly keen on using the MD-42 a lot. I mean, again, all at some point, it just tends to drop out in favor of some sort of heavy infantry builds because the MG42 is just too damn clumsy for what it's supposed to damn well supposed to do. So I really feel like, again, at some point, they're just going to have to, like, bite the bullet, except this doesn't work because that's not how the Wehrmacht used it in the actual war as well. So anyways, that's sort of roughly my thoughts here on the state of the balance. You know, some smaller changes here and there. But again, we'll have to see what happens with the patch up. But again... Some work to be done there, some things looking all right, but you know, there's still a bunch of stuff that could be, you know, treated about. So there you go, my thoughts here on the state of the balance. Hopefully you've uh, gained some value out of it. Hopefully some thoughts of your own. I'll be off for now then. Of course, you like what you can donate or pledge on Patreon. You know, every bit helps me to keep making all of these videos, so do consider it. It would be most appreciated. And this is Imperial Link saying cheers and see you all for another video. Bye.